Greetings and hope you're having a good day as we head into December, the final month of 2021, which has been a crazy year. Looking at any good deals in the southwestern or greater Toronto area for real estate investors and owners. Looking at some of the market highlights of why it's so crazy over last year before we jump in. As you can see, GTO home prices are up 22% year over year, ranging from 17% to 45% across the region, which is quite quite the year um and what this has done as you can see is it's led a record number of ontarians to actually move the province where they went well bc has been the number one destination quebec and alberta are close behind at number two and the maritime area is the number three where ontarians are leaving who just can't afford and realize they're never going to be able to afford a home in ontario in that what we saw here is some questionable behavior by uh, certain developers across the province. Now, this is just one story, but it's actually happened numerous times in the past year with the sudden and drastic increases in prices that uh, developers weren't expecting. They found ways to ask buyers for more money or say they're canceling the deal. Now, while this may seem unethical or questionable, it's apparently legal and the agency in charge, uh, the HCRA, uh, says they have no power to change, but they're asking builders uh, to act within reason, So, which is unfortunate. And over here on the right-hand side, we can see the Bank of Canada. So the Bank of Canada is, you know, they've sort of raised the flag about overheating and a possible correction, indicating investors and speculators who have been flocking uh, with expectations for price increases well, they've sort of created a self-fulfilling prophecy by more of them rushing in. They've more jumped at prices. You know, it's, it's you know, you know, we've had certain things happen in the stock market all the time. And again, it's happening in real estate similar in their point of view, which is a bit hypocritical in the sense is their low rates have helped fuel a lot of the speculation. So you can't really blame people with a bunch of money and low rates for using that money uh, and low rates. So in terms of those investors we were just talking about, so it's 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 taken a bit of a toll uh on those who aren't able to get in and be first time home buyers and it's actually for the first time in history it's these investors have become the number one single purchasers of homes in Ontario so prior to it was you know first time home buyers etc or people who were moving from home to home but uh currently you know for the last you know 18 to you know 30 months or so it shifted to uh investors uh so again it's a combination of low interest rates their home appreciation uh you know they're reduced their expenditures during COVID, so savings have increased so everything sort of lined up perfectly for those who have uh to go and invest more while those who haven't been able to uh they've just been pushed out of the market as we saw so it's led people to leave so how is the market done during this crazy year well if we take a look at the gta What we can see is the home price index composite, which is for all different types, detached, semi, townhouse, condo, across the whole 416 and 905 area, it's went up 28.3% year over year. So again, this is the biggest jump since the 1980s housing bubble, which has led a lot of red flags to go off by central agencies. Uh, and the average price now in uh, the GTA is $1.16 million up from 911,000 a year ago. Again, it's, it's you know, we passed the million dollar mark in, in a pretty big way, in a pretty big year. And also over here in red, as you can see, is in prior months, just a couple of months back, there was a pretty big discrepancy between the 416 and the 905, with the 416 being Toronto proper, uh, for those not familiar. so. It's basically there was a much larger increase in the 905, which is outside Toronto. And the last few months, uh, Toronto has been, you know, catching up in terms of percentage increases over the last year. So, uh, you know, I consider this sort of like a reopening trade as the city opens up and as the other places have just become, you know, the difference in value doesn't seem to be there anymore. People have come back in the, the 416 area. So where is the best place to buy now? Well, let me first address the other concern sort of been, you know, that's been out there about, hey, is it a bubble? Is it overheated? Uh, you know, what, what's going on exactly? Well, just to clarify those few points a bit. So when we think of an overvalued 
uh, market. So overvalued typically just slow down. So the growth rate slows down and it plateaus, uh, you know, as opposed to a bubble where things burst and go down. So where are we right now? Well, that's a matter of opinion. My personal viewpoint is that major urban centers, although they've overvalued, like they've been overvalued for more than a decade, but I don't necessarily consider them a value. So here I'm referring to places like Toronto, uh, Mississauga, like Vaughan, Richmond Hill. So these urban locations. But again, this could change. But right now, I personally just see them as overvalued, but not a bubble. However, the smaller towns, and here I'm talking about smaller towns that don't have any major large employers, like one of the auto companies or one of the tech companies uh, that aren't known for being good cottage or vacation destinations that everyone wants to flock to. And if they had a 30% year over year increase when they're typically in those low signal digits, these I would call more most likely to be a bubble. And if something's going to pop, it'll be those areas. Because again, there's no fundamental reasons why they should have been growing as fast. Whereas the urban centers, they've typically been, you know, close to double digit growth like the past decade. So that's no surprise. But these areas, you know, it's, it's a little questionable if, if this desire and demand will continue in the future. So what will stop the overheating or make the bubble burst? Well, there's three big things you should look for in real estate. So the first and foremost is mortgage rate hikes. So are there going to be any big mortgage rate hikes? Um, second one there is any investor or foreigner tax. As, as we can see in 2017, there was one in Toronto uh, for the foreign tax. Uh, British Columbia did the same thing uh, years prior and both of them did have an immediate impact and, and then a lot of you know smart uh, accountants and other financial people found ways that to help foreigners avoid the taxes so uh, that's been gone but so there was also something uh, Toronto had a couple of decades back in investors so that was provincially the investor tax so that's whether you're foreigner or local it's an investor tax to help local people who live here be able to buy their first home so this actually had a huge impact and it, and it was so good uh, that they had to reduce it pretty quickly and then they just got rid of it altogether as it led to a huge correction in the market. So, so again, taxes are always great. So the stick method. Um, and the other one here is people for, choose or forced to return to GTA. So this is around somewhat of employment, somewhat lifestyle. So again, the other big factor is if, hey, there's a sudden decrease in jobs. Uh, you know, like let's say your town is dependent on the Ford plant and the Ford plant closes down. Well, that's going to have a huge impact on real estate because people that live and work there no longer do. Uh, but because people are able to work remotely now for a lot of white collar jobs, it hasn't affected the white collar workers as much. However, if a lot of those white collar workers do need to return to GTA in a year or two years from now, or they just, you know what, the big house in a small town is great, but I really miss being in the city and they want to be in the city again then I do see that being negative again for the smaller areas, which I do feel are in a bubble, but I don't see this last point being as bad for their GTA and the urban centers directly as, as you know, they're a little more long-term stable in that respect. So this slide is a little busy, uh, but it is a summary of much of Southwestern Ontario. So if you look at this, are there any good deals in Southwestern Ontario? Frankly, uh, unfortunately, no, there, there's not really. Uh, the past 18 months, uh, you know, the, you know, the real estate bonanza that used to be the GTA center has sort of spread across most of the regions in southwestern Ontario. But if you did need to, you know, live somewhere close in the GTA, did want to invest somewhere in the GTA, where would I recommend as the best areas right now? Well, I've highlighted those in yellow there, and believe it or not, it's it's actually you know Toronto, which is seen as one of the most expensive cities, which it is. But again, there's a difference between expensive and a bubble or really overvalued. So yes, Toronto is expensive, but I don't believe it's in a bubble. And similar would apply to the other areas I've highlighted, such as Mississauga, Aurora, Markham, Richmond Hill, and Vaughan. So those areas, yes, but they were expensive before the pandemic, and you know, so they've, yes, they've been expensive, but I don't see them as likely uh, to be a bubble and they haven't appreciated as much as some of the smaller towns. Uh, hence, I've highlighted just some of their growth rates uh, over the past year over year compared with the surrounding regions. So as you can see, Toronto and, you know, and Mississauga have generally been lower 
uh, than a lot of the surrounding regions for the year-over-year -year increases. Hence, again, if the other places increases so much, it's better to go to the place that increased least right now because uh, you're most likely to have more appreciation there and less chance of losses or you know smaller losses if there is a correction. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and just further expanding on why I choose these highlighted areas. Well, first, as I mentioned, they're among the least appreciated price over price. So, you know, least likely to be hit by decline. The demand also in these highlighted areas, they've traditionally been pretty stable and consistent price increases. Again, independent of the pandemic, uh, they've always been desirable places for people to live. Third is post pandemic, when everything reopens, there'll be the least hit like smaller rural areas where there might be where people realize, you know, the small town lifestyle really wasn't for them. Even though I got a huge house with a nice pool, uh, I, I miss having people, nice restaurants, theaters, shows, you know, airports, uh, all the things that are nicely close by. A fourth big thing which is being uh, sort of needs to think about is immigrants. So during the pandemic, it's, it's you know, shut down the, uh, the emigration of people to Canada. So, but I do expect once the influx of new immigrants do come in, a lot of them do, you know, the jobs are in the urban centers, their friends and communities are in the urban centers. So a lot of them want to live in an and work in an urban center when they get here. So that's going to be another boom for the places highlighted in yellow, not as much for the places outside. Uh, next point and last one, just to point out here is, so in each of these yellow areas of highlighted, so, you know, they are pretty big city areas per se. And, and there are, you know, in them about five or 10 specific communities uh, through those areas where there are the best deals. And, and again, I could spend more time getting in, just, you know, leave a note if you want to know any specific area like Toronto, Mississauga, Markham, which Hill Vaughan, which communities and areas are the best. Uh, but there are some good pockets in each of those communities where you will find the best deals. But generally, stick to those highlighted ones, in my opinion, is right now, best point to, places to invest. And within those, there is, you know, good and bad spots within, which are more overvalued, undervalued. So this is looking at southwestern Ontario. So as I mentioned, frankly, it's not as good in southwest Ontario. What about the rest of the country? Well, what you see here is uh, a Bank of Canada indicators uh, looking at house price exuberance. So again, it's uh, it's the whole idea of getting into, you know, is it overvalued, is there a bubble? And basically outside of Ontario's urban centers and Montreal, which they see as, you know, there's already been a ton of house price exuberance, uh, they still see value in other large urban centers across Canada. So, you know, even Vancouver compared to Toronto is, you know, more affordable. Uh, same in Victoria, Calgary, Winnipeg, and Quebec. Um, they don't have the Maritimes out there. The Maritimes should be there as well because the Maritimes is, is fairly good. Maybe they'll add that for the next one. Bank of Canada, come on, Maritimes is part of the country. Uh, I digress. So I would tend to agree with this uh, based on everything that I've discussed with peers and everything I've read. This makes sense. So if, if you can, if you're, you know, if, if you're not in the GTA area, Southwestern, or if you are, but you're okay with owning a place out of province, any of the other large urban centers are a great area right now for you to invest uh, your money in uh, because they haven't increased to the way uh, that Ontario and Montreal have uh, in recent years. So, and just one thing to mention right now, just as things are so exuberant and have things also increased, right now is really not the time to get in if you're thinking of doing a short-term flip. But if you're in there for a longer term horizon, this is a home where you're going to rent it out for a few years. That makes more sense now than most times because prices have increased so much. So just keep that in mind uh, and don't be looking for a quick, quick flip. Well, that's it for now. Um, hope you guys have a great holiday season. Uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. If there are any questions, please do reach out. And again, thank you very much and take care. Cheers.